Hi there, this is Will Drews with the Knox County Soil and Water Conservation District. And today we are going to um, be planting a pollinator and bee garden at the Grow City Teaching Garden, um, which is a joint project uh, with the SWCD uh, Education Committee, the Knox County Public Library, Purdue Extension, and Vincennes University. Um, and with this pollinator uh, bundle that we're planting, it is one of the new initiatives with our uh, Knox County Sisma and our native plant sales. So you can um, look at our website for more information on that. And let's get started. Here's a picture showing the specific plant bundle we're going to be using today um, and some details about it and uh, we actually had to do some substitutions and we'll talk about that um, a little bit later as we go through it all right so here we have our site which is covered in black plastic um, so one of the methods that we wanted to try for this um, for this planting is solarizing the the um, the area for site prep and so what we're doing with solarizing is we're leaving this tarp on there for um, over a month to try to kill the existing vegetation underneath and we will do our first uncover here in a second to see how well we do we did um, and next to it on the left here we have our plants that we're going to plant in the area um, for this bundle, we picked in particular plants that attract um, pollinators. So we have um, butterfly weed in the foreground, our orange flowering milkweed, a couple little blue stems, um, which are a short prairie grass on either side of that. Um, on the top left, we have a wild bergamot up here, um, which is a great pollinator magnet. In the middle we have field thistle, which is an absolute delight for um, especially butterflies late season, and tall ironweed in the back. And then on the side we have golden alexanders, which is a good early uh, bloom that normally blooms in, um, it just finished peak bloom here in Knox County, um, and provides good early uh, pollinator benefits as well as it's a host plant for the black swallowtail. All right, so here we have uh, our interns, Chase and Nicole, that are going to work to uh, uncover um, the black plastic and see uh, how we did on um, killing off the existing turf. So they're removing uh, the bricks and weights, weights that we have down to keep the tarp in place. And the tarp's a little bit over... Um, uh, the, it's a little bit larger than the area that we're hoping to plant to hopefully make sure that we got a good kill in the, in the middle area, um, which we'll be doing the planting. All right, so they're working on removing it right now. And look at that. We do have, um, pretty good success. You can tell how, uh, the, the vegetation underneath is definitely, um, not as lush and green as the outside vegetation. We're probably going to dig out a little bit of the green stuff to make sure that it's um, that that none of the turf um, grows in. Um, but but we'll call this a pretty good success. And um, the next step after a little bit of prep will be planting. All right. So now, if you notice, we uh, we just removed a little bit of the still the existing thatch material and some of the green grass on on top. And now we have our site looking good, and the plants are laid out where we want them. And now um, we are ready to plant. So Nicole and Chase are going to get in on this action. And um, with planting small um, square plot, uh, square pots, um, plugs like this, it's really easy to um, just be able to make um, small holes with, with just hand trowels and be able to um, plant uh, right into, into that. Um, depending on how uh, nice your soil is, um, the, soil, the soil can be difficult and um, that will aid in a, it will either make it easy or a difficult planting. So, as you see here, Nicole's working on 
getting that wild bergamot ready to go in the ground there. Just lightly compressing the sides of the pot can help and what can also help is breaking the root ball a little bit. And she's just going to fill in the hole a little bit. That's excellent. At the same time, Chase has got that little blue stem in and looking nicely. Then we'll move on to the next ones. Alright, so now we have the garden planted. You can see all of our nice plants and nicely spaced out here. So we have uh, in the front of the garden what we're hoping are two butterfly weeds and two little blue stems, more of our short stature things. And then in the back, some of our taller species, um, uh, the, the uh, wild bergamot, um, field thistle, tall ironweed, um, golden alexanders. Um, and so now the goal is we want to water them in and then finish off with some mulch. So Chase over here has got our hose and is going to give them a nice drink. Um, so a couple uh several seconds on each uh underneath each plant should give them a nice um uh, a drink initial drink and we've we've been fortunate to have some fairly consistent periodic moisture which does help um as well one of the things that you want to do as you're watering in um is also make sure what you can do um is tuck the plants in make sure as uh the as you're watering and soil's moving to make sure that uh, the plants are securely in the ground, um, which is going to help with root development. So Chase is just going to finish up here, and then um, after that we will uh, start to mulch this guy. Oops. Uh, Alright, so we have Chase right here, has our mulch, and he is going to start um, opening up. And we want um, the best, so mulch provides a lot of benefits. Um, it uh, helps with moisture retention. Um, it will. It provides a, a cooler. It, it provides a cooling effect on hot summer days. Um, instead of uh, bare soil, it will give. It will make the roots stay retain moisture better, um, and the plants will be healthier. As well as it also is a weed suppressor. So is having some kind of cover around your plants is very beneficial, um, especially first year as as we want these um, our seed lanes to get established. So um, one to two, uh, one to three inches of mulches is is, uh, is ideal um, to to maximize those benefits. So now we have our garden all mulched and ready to go, um, and it's padded down. We have about a, about a two-inch layer of mulch on top of the surface. One of the things we'll just do now is uh, is water down the mulch, which will help um, soak it in um, and give it a little bit of um, uh, moisture um, initially so it doesn't take some moisture out of the soil. And... We'll be good to go. That's our little pollinator garden. All right. Thanks for watching.